In this video, we explain the use of virtual test drives for the development of vehicle functions, especially for vehicle stability. We are test driving on a racetrack, and maybe you wonder why we don't use a race car, but what we want to test is the stability function ESP and steering control of a serious vehicle. To do this, we are using the virtual test drive environment Dyna4 to stimulate vehicle dynamics controls in the same way as in a real vehicle. Dyna4 contains a detailed vehicle dynamics model and provides sensor signal such as wheel speed, lateral acceleration and steering angle. Based on these simulated sensor signal, the control unit correctly recognizes the driving condition. Ideally, your ECU cannot distinguish the simulated sensor signals from real test drives. You can test many control functions only in simulation with such a vehicle model, since the sensor signals must be consistent and coherent. The vehicle model reacts to the brake actor signals of the control units and realistically reflects the driving behavior. For this purpose, we describe the physical property of a vehicle by mathematical models. In particular, we calculate the individual tire forces resulting from the behavior of the wheel suspension and the road surface. You can see the tire forces here as green arrows. The virtual test vehicle provides the same operating interfaces as a real car, such as pedals, steering wheel and gear lever. These are operated by our virtual driver who steers the vehicle along the specified path over the racetrack. You see the path as a yellow line. The driver model uses the common information that a real driver also receives in a cockpit, such as driving speed and engine revolutions per minute. In addition, the driver model has direct access to variables that describe the driving condition, such as side slip angle, yaw rate and lateral acceleration. Also the force currently applied to the steering wheel is available. You can see these values on the right hand side. You also can configure typical human mistakes. For example, the driver starts a curve a little too fast or accelerates in a curve. In such situations, the ESC then intervenes to keep the vehicle stable. The ABS anti-lock braking system prevents the wheels from blocking. If a wheel is about to block during braking, the brake pressure is reduced only at this wheel. The ESC also calculates individual brake pressures for all four wheels in case the vehicle starts to skid. You can see the brake pressures at the wheels in the widget bar on the left. The tire model calculates forces acting on the vehicle from the individual brake pressure. Thus you can study the effect of ESC actions on the driving behavior. Via the sensor models, the changed driving behavior is in turn reported to the control unit, creating a closed control loop. The ESC usually intervenes when the sum of the longitudinal and lateral acceleration approaches or exceeds 1G. We show the longitudinal and the lateral acceleration in the so-called GG diagram on the left widget bar. The vehicle usually moves within the circle of 1G total acceleration. At the bottom you can now see the tie rod forces acting on the steering rack. The bar chart also shows the sum of the two forces. The steering system also includes the electrical power steering, which absorbs a large part of the tie rod forces. At the bottom right you can see the torque the driver has to apply to the steering wheel. The force remains less than 6 Nm thanks to power steering. The steering control unit is interconnected with the driving dynamics control. This enables the ESC control unit to request additional steering torques. Then the real driver tends to choose a steering angle that is more favorable for the driving stability. In addition, the steering control units communicates with driving assistant functions such as lane keeping assist. Virtual test drives in Dyna4 also allow you to test and evaluate such networked functions. For more information, please visit our website or contact us via vector.com/dyna4.